Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to yet another episode on Little Slaw YouTube channel. So I have brought this video on HTTP Cache Manager is because in one of uh, my recent videos, I've got a comment asking for a clarification that how to handle the cache when it comes to JMeter. So they want to handle the cache. So for example, like the application that the user or the customer is using has a requirement to load the cache at the very first time so that every time when the user hits they do not want to reach the server and fetch all the static items and there is another requirement where they want to emulate the user experience as a new user every time they emulate the application so there are like two different combinations so in this application we will see how to effectively use the HTTP cache manager and we will see what are the options we have and how to use the HTTP cache manager in a way that we can handle both these situations and before we move on to the video this is me Vasan Shanugam I welcome you all to Little Sly YouTube channel please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and here is my Little Sly YouTube uh, channel video uh, videos which I have on different topics so in case if you have any queries on Kubernetes on uh, Azure DevOps on Visual VM Profiler tool on uh, JMeter Neoload please don't forget to click and watch them and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and with that we move on to the video and before that I'll at the end of this video I will update my code in my github so that you can take it from there if you want to try it in your machine so now let's move on to the JMeter so before we see how to use the HTTP cache manager I will just quickly record an application so let me go back to the pet store and let me start the recording and for that I'm going to create a template create from a template which is a recording template I'm going to create it from here let me enable this HTTP test script or script recorder and I'll click on start and this will create the proxy for us to reach the application so the first step is going to be the petstore.com and then the second step is so we're going to enter the store. I'm going to just try only few steps because I do not want to bore you with a lot of transactions. So just few steps and a sign in. And a sign out just to say like we are reaching the databases and the static contents to the server and yes now we are done with the script so I have stopped the recording and let me minimize this I'll go to the thread group so here we have got the scripts let me make sure we have got the correct request and not the other unval uh, invalid request so yes so here we can find there is an invalid request which is not part of our application so let me remove it let's come back to the next one here so except this request all the other requests are not required so we can remove them as well and then the last one yes so we need all these so yeah let me save this script now I have a folder here under my bin which is for HTTP cache manager and this is going to be demo and let me save this so now yeah we are ready with the script not going to make any other changes so one thing which I'm going to do here is I'm going to create another controller so I'm going to duplicate this so we have got two controllers and this I'm going to in this controller I'm going to add the cache manager so this is going to be with cache manager and this controller is going to be without 
cache manager so that's the difference and we will also name the applications the same way so this will contain with sorry for the spelling mistake this is going to be with cache manager and let me save it so we can add for all the transactions so with cache manager so that we can easily identify the differences between them and also i will explain you uh, the different components of the cache manager like how it works or like what are all the aspects which we have to enable or disable in the cache manager so let me add this and now here this is going to be without cache manager so let me copy this go back to the transactions and let's add the name which we planned here for all the transactions so all these going to be without the cache manager so all the the main the controllers the, the request and even the controllers so everything i'm going to name in a way that i'm going to differentiate all of them yes so i have named it and then the next part is i'm going to add a uniform random timer because this timer will will add or will emulate the delays for each of these transactions so i'm going to add another one as well for here it's going to be the timer just a uniform random timer and let me bring it to the top so let me bring it here yep and the response time which i'm going to use here is going to be like just for example it's going to be like five seconds which is five thousand milliseconds and the next part the most important part is the cache manager so it comes under the config element so i'm going to add the http cache manager and before adding it let me explain you the parts so here we have three options so one is the clear cache each iteration so i'm going to choose this during this first execution so what does this do what does this clear cache iteration do because for the very few iterations for the very first few iterations when we start to hit the server from our j meter from our machine at some point of time the j meter of the machine starts to collect those responses and keep it in our machine in a temporary storage so that whenever we hit the server or when we hit the application the next time the request goes via the machine to the server and when it identifies that this is a request which we already have in our machine so it takes the value from our cache not from the server so because of this if your application really needs to hit the server every time that will be stopped but it helps in the other way this is not something which is a this is going to ha do harm to your application this is in fact it works both way it, if your application really needs to have the cache in your application in your mission to reduce the number of amount of data that comes from the server to your machine this will help you because you have all those data in your cache so every time you don't need to go back to the server and get all the static data so all those static parts all those static components will be stored in your machine only the dynamic part or only the dynamic data will be taken from the server because they're going to be new every time so in this example like for example that, that that's what i'm going to do here so this particular script so with cache manager all these transactions will run with the cache manager that is i'm going to clear all these cache for each iteration so that every time they will be new users but then you might be wondering what all the other two options here does so when you see the second option here so it it shows or it tells that use thread group configuration to control cache clearing so what is this thread group configuration to control cache clearing so when you go to the thread group here it tells you same user it says same user on each iteration so what is the same user on each iteration so when you use the same user on each iteration that means the data is cached in your machine so every time when you hit the server it tells that this is the same user which i have already used so take the data from the cache and not from the server so this is again will add cache or will take the data from the cache so i'm going to clear this as well 
but in fact I'm, I have not made any change so if I select this option here this will be overridden so any cache settings which I do here will be overridden if I choose this because as I told you use thread group configuration to control cache clearing so if I choose this it is going to take the value from the cache and not from the server and if I'm going to remove it then every time it's going to be new user so which means that this is going to be new user every time so but again there is another case so if I choose this the clear cache each iteration will not happen because both these options are going to be same but you have to play very carefully you have to choose or you have to uncheck the same user on each iteration and then you have to choose the use thread group configuration to control cache clearing right and then the third option here which says that so because that's what i'm saying so if you choose this this is uh, this is unavailable because these are like options but when you choose this one these two goes and like it can work both clear cache each iteration or it is like use thread group configuration to control cache clearing and use cache control expires header when processing get record. so we will see this now what is this use cache control expires so this cache control or expires header is something like these are the http headers so when you go to the http header so when you go to this header there is a header which this http header that's used to control the caching behavior in the browsers and the proxies so they specify how long a browser or an intermediary cache can keep a copy of a particular resource before it should be considered stale and revalidated so that's the reason we use or we have this use cache controller express header but since we do not find that particular header in any of these uh, http requests we have no option to use this but still i'm just going to uncheck it and i'll explain you what are the other options so here as it's mentioned that when processing get requests so get requests we all know it's one of the http method which is used to retrieve data from a server and we have, when we visit a web page our browser sends get requests to the server to fetch resources like html files or images or style sheets so that's what is going to be cached and this cache controller expires so they have a value and that value is specified in the cache control or expires HTTP headers and these values indicate how long the resource can be cached before it's considered stale and there is another point that this particular option that is use cache control expires header so they check the time they just they check they do a check against the current time so the system compares the cache control expires value of the requested resource against the current time and if the request method is get and the cache control expires timestamp is in the future the system does not need to fetch the resource from the remote server instead it can return the cached version immediately and this is to emulate the browser behavior because browsers cache resources to ca to improve the performance and reduce the load on the servers and by using the cache controller expires header and checking against the current time this process actually mimics how processes how browsers handle the caching so if the requested resource has not changed since it was last cached and it's still within the valid caching period the system can serve the cached version without contacting the server again and the response body will become empty because if the response if the requested resource has not changed and it's served from the cache the response body may be empty because there is no need to transfer the request data again instead the browser or the client can use the cached version it already has okay so with that now let's move on to the practical part so i'll save this i'll clear all the cache here and let me add so we here we have the view results tree which i will disable it for now because anyways you're not going to do any uh, functional testing part so let me add the most important listener which is the aggregate report so this will have the average median and 99 90 95 99 minimum and maximum values and this will show us how clearly there is a difference between the uh, request for both the HTTP uh, the request with cash cash manager without cash manager let me check once again here so okay I have not made any changes we save it and in the third group I'm going to just add 100 users and they're going to iterate for like five times 
let me see how does it go I want it existing file let's go to the aggregate report and here we can see the values for with cache manager and without cache manager and here we can see we are going to we are getting the results for the values with cache manager let me okay so now we can see there is a difference between the request so this is the same i have not made any change in fact everything you are you are witnessing apart from adding the cache manager and that too in the cache manager i'm i've added a point where i have to clear the cache each iteration right so that's not the only change which i have made and here you can see there is a clear difference between the response times so here you can see for the first transaction it was it is 111 seconds as milliseconds and for the request for the same request without cache manager that is this during this transaction all those values are taken from the cache yeah that's the difference so the same same thing is for the other transactions as well in case if they really take data so in most of the requests you can see there's a big difference between the values between the values that takes data from the cache manager so you can see here even this is one of the requests which there is a huge difference like it is 156 milliseconds for the rest request which is without cache manager and when it comes to the without with cache manager it's like 67 sorry i think it's a different request i guess let's wait for the test to get complete and then we will do a clear review So now the test has completed so let me make few changes here so now we have minimum average and maximum response times and then let me bring the 90th percentile and the 95th and then the 99th so now here we if we can see the first transaction which is the 0, 0135 so with cache manager that is we have cleared the cache and because of that there is a response time of 104 and then without the cache manager response time is 34 and the same is k the same is the case with the other transactions or few of the other transactions here so with cash manager and without cash manager so in some cases you can see that there is a little delay in the response times and that is because i have make a change here so same user on each iteration so i'm going to just so we we have actually have this settings which has been removed previously so let me go into i'm going to just add this change because all these changes have been taken from the group so I have added this settings now and let's do another test and see how does it work so now we are in the report section and here we can see for the request with cache manager the maximum response time is one two seven milliseconds and for the same request without cache manager it's one zero two so which clearly shows that the value is taken from the cache and there is one more difference which we can see here there's a big big difference between this request the request 5 where it has two requests and the maximum response time is almost like 0.5 seconds and the maximum for the same request is like 0.2 seconds so same way you can see uh, here as well like with cache manager it's like double the times for with and without cache manager so that's how the cache manager works and there is one more thing which i have forgot, I forgot to say here so when you make this number of element which is the maximum number of elements in cache to zero you can in fact reduce the amount of elements that in that that is in the cache so in case if you want to increase the number of items you can increase so by default it comes with with 5000 and in case if you want to increase it you can increase it to 10000 or depends on how much cash do you really want to save it in your local cache so with that i come to an end in case if you have any doubts or any queries please do comment in the comment section also please let you let me know your feedbacks on this video and for any of my other videos as well and if you want to have any consultation or discussion please do comment in the comment section or reach out to my email id so until i meet you in another interesting video it's bye bye from us and little slaw